Go Jackers. Hello all and welcome to Rec Talk. So we're in the off season now. There's not um, a ton to talk about. Uh, the last video didn't necessarily do so well in views, but that's okay. We're going to keep making content and uh, talk about Georgia Tech football because I love it. I love Georgia Tech football. Um, so today I wanted to talk about um, now that we're in 2023, kind of a state of the program and where, where is Georgia Tech at? You know, now that we've made some hires, we've got one kind of recruiting class under our belts and transfer class. Um, you know, what, what is the state of Georgia Tech football? I'm going to grade it on, on a letter grade. So if I had made this video and had a channel at the beginning of the season and last off season. Uh, I probably would have given the set of the program a, a, like a D minus or an F. Uh, I mean, we were in dire straits. We're coming off the heels of three straight three and nine seasons and kind of being told, um, you know, it's going to be different though. Jeff, Jeff Collins is our man. <laughs> Everything's fine. He has a clear vision uh, for where the program is going. And I think most Georgia Tech fans were just like, look, uh, there's no reason to believe this year is going to be any different, especially with Colin saying, oh, well, uh, if you don't see the improv improvement in the program, you don't want to see it. Like, come on, man, get out of here with that. Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining, all right? Um, so we knew something substantially different was going to have to happen. Um, you know, we open up the season um, with some kind of baffling coaching decisions against Clemson, um, but – Played relatively well on defense and kind of gave us some hope. Um, then we get throusted by uh, by Ole Miss, forty-two to nothing. And Lane Kiffin says, "Well, uh, you know, leave it up to Lane to do the right thing in the wrong way." Uh, even, even though I do like <laughs> Lane Kiffin, I think he's kind of the new Steve Spurrier. But uh, said, "Yeah, I know, I know their coach is on the hot seat. I just, you know, basically didn't didn't, didn't want to make it any worse." And it's like, "Well, look, Lane." Um, there's nothing you can do that's really going to make it any worse at this point. Like, w w we're in the worst spot we've been in as a program probably in its history. So, uh, you know, don't take it easy on our, our account. Um, so, you know, Brent Key takes over, um, and, and immediately thing, things are different. Um, and that's why, I, you know, I'll give a different grade now. I do think things – are on the upswing, and I do think things are improving. So Key takes over. We go on the road. Uh, three touchdown underdogs against Pitt get a win. Uh, then we come back home and get a win against a good Duke team. I mean, both those teams won nine games this year, and both of them, you know, won their bowl game. Like, th th those are two good teams. Um you know, we end up stumbling against Virginia. Our starting quarterback goes down. You know, a lot of things went wrong when Key took over, which I think is a testament to the kind of coach um, that he is and can be in the future, that he was still able to manage um, to get some wins, particularly against teams that um, are more talented than us, that, that, have, that are in a much better position to win um, than we were this year. Uh, and we talked about in the last video that our defense was really – you know, the anchor uh, of our team. You know, Andrew Thacker made a liar of me. Our defense played very well. Um, we talked about Jason Seymour being nominated linebacker coach of the year. Um, tremendous pay play from Ely and Thomas. Um, so we're able to get wins, uh, you know, against Virginia Tech, Pitt, North Carolina, and Duke. So we get into the offseason. Um, key is named the starting or the, the, the head coach officially. I think he's making like 2.9, something like that right now a year. Um, and this is another, you know, another thing as far as the program improving. Uh, we have, I think, 20% more money for staff than we've ever had, probably in the program's history, even if you adjust for inflation. So we have $7.5 million to hire a staff. And a big part of Key being hired was I think he had – the full support um, of the donors. This was their guy. Um, he certainly wasn't Jay Bat's first guy, but I do think we have the right guy at the helm. And that's really step one is, you know, we have to get the right head coach in. Now, whether we do and he's the guy for Tech, um, he's done everything he can do to prove that, I think, up to this point. 
Um, but he's going to have to um, really garner some some success in the next three years to to justify that that he is the guy, you know. And I think he would be the first guy to tell you that too. He's a no nonsense guy. At the end of the day, um, it's all about winning football games. You know, we have to win. Uh, you know, we have to win football games. We have to make bowls. We got to compete uh, for our conference. Now, it doesn't feel good, and there's really nothing I think to write home about with a fifty-something ranked recruiting class. Now, do I think there's some diamonds in the rough in this class? Um, yeah, I do think we do, particularly at wide receiver. We've got a lot of talent, a lot of speed at wide receiver coming off. We were able to get um, what could be a, a, a sleeper linebacker and, and some sleeper you know, defensive linemen. I don't know why my nose is itching so much. Um, maybe some, some Jeff Collins stuff going on. Um, but I think we did as well as, as could have been expected um, with where we've been. Um, from really being kind of an, a program in the F tier um, at the bottom of the Division One ranks and, and kind of salvaging something uh, together. So, you know, Key talked about scouting these guys, you know, and, and, and really just judging, you know, what he sees. Uh, and I think that's something you have to do. Like, I think we can all get caught up in star ratings. And look, you know, teams that are consistently competing for their conference and, and – at the top of the heap of college football, they're all going to have more f- four and five stars than other people. I, I get that, um, but Rome wasn't built in a day, and we have you know we have to start somewhere. Now moving forward, you know we're going to have to recruit better, um, and I think that the capability for Tech is to recruit in the top twenty-five, um, are very close to it. Maybe not top twenty-five every year, but. I think we can kind of consistently be around the top 25, even given the recruiting restrictions we have with academics. Um, and with that, I, I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, TCU and um, what, the, you know, they're in a national title game. And I was thinking, like, I don't remember them having, you know, out of the world talent or recruits. Um, so I went and looked up um, how they've recruited in the past five years. Um, and where they finished. So TCU in 2018 was 25th overall in recruiting, which is you know a, a very good class for 95% of programs. They had four four stars. I think the rest were two and three stars, and they finished seven and six unranked. Um, the interesting thing is they kind of took steps back as far as. Um, you know, success they had on the field. So in 2019, they were 32nd uh, ranked overall recruiting. And this is all from 247. They had four four stars. They finished five and seven unranked. 2020, they stepped back up in recruiting uh, to the best class they've had in the past five years. They were 23rd. They actually had one five star running back that they signed. um, And they had six four stars. Now, one of their four stars transferred out and that five star running back ended up transferring uh, to Ole Miss, so they weren't able to keep um, necessarily all the players that they recruited, but really no, no program does. Um, almost every program has some some players transfer out, and as we move forward, that's going to be a big part of maintaining successful programs is not only recruiting at high levels, but keeping the talent that you did recruit. So you look at Texas A&M, who Tech has had the benefit of having some big-time transfers uh, come in, um, you know, they had the number one recruiting class. Almost all the talent, uh, top talent they recruited, as seems like it's transferred out. So 2021, they take another step back. Um, oh, by the way, they were six and four in 2020 unranked. 2021, they're 44th ranked in recruiting. Um, they had three four stars and end up five and seven unranked. And then last year's recruiting class, they were 20, 28th ranked overall, so they stepped back up. They have three four stars. And they're 13 and 13 and 1 with a national title appearance. Um, so they averaged 30th in recruiting over that time. Um, and look, am I, am I making the case that if you're averaging 30th in recruiting, um, it's reasonable to expect you can make a national title game? No, that, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is – there is an avenue to being really successful um, on the odd year 
without recruiting at, at the highest levels of college football. What will be interesting to see is how Texas a you know, despite what happens against Georgia, um, how their program fares in the next five years. Do they revert back to kind of mediocre seasons, six and seven, six and six, uh, and, and whatever? Um, man, people, people are calling me while I'm doing videos. Uh, anyways, um, but I think that's that's a reasonable expectation um, for Tech to recruit at. Um, you know, around that 30 mark, maybe a little better. Uh, so I do think we've made staff moves to, to help with recruiting. Aaron Joe, I think, is a really good get that's been in Alabama. Um, you know, Brent Key's another guy that's been in Alabama. These are two guys that have seen the highest levels of success in college football that are on staff. Um, we've hired Norval McKenzie as our running backs coach, uh, Jeep Wade. And really, you know, the, the biggest thing, or maybe not the biggest thing, but a, a big thing to be excited about with Georgia Tech football is I think we made a home run hire um, at offensive coordinator with Buster Faulkner. Um, from what I'm hearing from Georgia fans, they're really, you know, they really hate to see him go. You know, they have a ton of respect for him. Kirby, Todd Monken both have a ton of respect for Buster Faulkner. He's a big part of developing Stetson Bennett and, um, and kind of elevating his level of play to where he is. You know, this isn't a bash Stetson Bennett video. You know, he's he's been able to be very, very successful um, with kind of a less than impressive natural skill set. Uh, so, you know, more, more power to him. Absolutely thrilled to have Buster Faulkner. So we've completely turned over, you know, the offensive staff. Uh, Josh Crawford, another up-and-coming guy uh, from Western Kentucky. I said Western Carolina in the video I made about him. Um, so he's our wide receivers coach. So I think we've made, you know, really wise hires for our program at all these position coaches. We've got, I think, the right guy at the helmet head coach, and we've got um, – you know, a really good hire, uh, an offensive coordinator with Buster Faulkner. So, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of things trending in the right direction, but here's the thing. It's all going to come down to what happens next season. Can we make all these moves and hires and have it translate, um, to a lot of success on, on the field next year? Um, remains to be seen. I'm excited to see what Buster Faulkner does with the offense and with developing Haynes King. By the way, I'm currently working on uh, a breakdown of Haynes King's, Haynes King's play. Um, there are some things I've seen, some bad habits he had in high school that have, that have translated into his play um, that's kind of plagued him at Texas A&M. Um, he's phenomenally talented, but um, – there's some weird things with his arm motion. It's not necessarily where he holds the ball. His throwing motion is a bit awkward and a little bit slow. Um, so I'll be excited to see what Winky and Faulkner can do, um, kind of with, with ironing out some of that. Um, so with state of the, you know, state of the program, um, I think it's always important to talk about what are the expectations moving in this to this next year. Um, I think, you know, the baseline expectation is we've got to make a bowl. Tech hasn't made a bowl, I think, since, what, 2018, Paul's last year. Um, the baseline expectation would be to make a bowl, six and six. And I think I've looked through, and I'll do a video on going through our schedule, you know, in, in the months to come. There's six wins on this schedule uh, for, for sure, um, you know, with the ceiling probably being nine, um, that would be if, if a lot of things go, go right, Buster Faulkner really gets um, the offense going in the right direction. We see the same type of play out of the defense. Um, you know, possibly you could, get, you could get to nine wins, but I think probably the expectation is six and six. And I think the expectation for recruiting is really what I'm seeing um, – from TCU's recruiting, like being around 30th in the country, um, probably for next year is still coming off the heels of some, some things that really need to be corrected. Um, probably if we can get in the forties or upper thirties, 
um, that would also be trending in the right direction. And we're already making strides in that. We've already got the number 19th overall quarterback recruit, four-star. Um, Winky has got committed, and he got that commit. Um, I don't know if we had fired uh, Chip Long or not at that time, but without any, a whole lot of certainty as far as the direction of the offense, um, I think we're going to see a lot of good things with the recruiting of Faulkner, um, Winky, and uh, along with uh, Brent Key and uh, Aaron Joe. So we'll, we'll see how that translates into this season. To give a grade for what the state of the program is right now, I would probably give it a C or a C minus, uh, ju- just because you know we haven't. We're still hunting a bowl. We're still hunting some better recruiting classes. The good news is, is like I said, we have. I think we have the right guy at head coach, and we have a really, really good hire in offensive coordinator. So, um, yeah, state of the program is probably. If I had to commit to one, probably just a C, you know, with um, having a new head coach. And, and it's you – know, I've talked about it, it's interesting because this is really like year one and a half because he coached, you know, the majority of last season. But let me know what you think. Like, what is the state of Georgia Tech football in your eyes? Do you do you like the hires? What is your expectation for next year? Like, what would be um, – an underwhelming season for Tech next year. For me, it would be if we didn't make a bowl, that would be um, the disappointment given a lot of the moves that we have made. So uh, hopefully, um, you know, I've earned a like and subscribe from you. It helps the channel a lot. Um, Working on the Haynes King uh, breakdown coming up, that's going to take me some time. Live show this Sunday. Uh, we're going to have a call-in show, so hopefully we have a lot of you guys calling. We can talk, we can interact, and have a good time. Uh, with that, uh, go Jackets, and uh, y'all have a great day.